orthopedics for 15 years in a row by U.S. News and World Report. Most major insurance plans accepted. Learn more at hss.edu. Choose better. Move better. Sponsoring WNYC means reaching hundreds of thousands of engaged and discerning listeners who've made our shows part of their daily routine. Find more on sharing your business message with WNYC's unique audience at wnyc.org sponsorship. On this week's On the Media, we examine the impact of increasingly violent political rhetoric after a second attempt on Donald Trump's life. It's hard to argue that assassination is not part of America's political heritage when we see at least a quarter of all American presidents either having been killed or nearly assassinated. On this week's On the Media from WNYC, tonight at 9 or Sunday morning at 10 on 93.9 FM. The Secret Service faces fallout after a suspect is arrested in what officials say was another assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump. Vice President Harris holds an event with the National Association of Black Journalists and a Zoom conference with Oprah. And the Fed cuts interest rates as Congress fails to pass a bill to fund the government. All that and more on the Friday News Roundup next time on 1A. Weekdays at 3 on 93.9 FM, AM 820, or live stream it at WNYC.org. It is 6.51. Marketplace Morning Report is next. And then later on Morning Edition, a new documentary follows the world of competitive high school mariachi performance. Going Varsity in Mariachi is now streaming on Netflix. We'll have more next hour on Morning Edition. with some clouds right now on our way to a mostly sunny Friday, a high of 78, the last Friday of summer. And then tomorrow on Sunday, some sunshine, mid to low 70s as fall begins on Sunday. Also on this last weekend of summer, we have coastal flood advisories, coastal flood watches, and rip current statements for some of our ocean beaches all the way through Sunday. So if you're squeezing in another weekend at the beach, be careful. It's 652. Credit card rates may come down from super high to also still high. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Amazon Business, aiming to help save time by offering smart business buying solutions so there's more time to focus on growing the business and less time doing the admin. More at AmazonBusiness.com. From Marketplace, I'm Sabri Beneshaw, in for David Brancaccio. Now that the Federal Reserve has lowered its benchmark interest rate, consumer loans should get cheaper with time. Some already have. But the Fed only moved rates a little, so the impact on sky-high credit card rates, for example, is going to be minimal, according to bank rate projections. Soaring credit card rates have attracted the attention of many politicians, including former President Donald Trump, who this week said wants, he wants to temporarily cap credit card rates at around 10%, far less than where they are now. So how doable is that? Marketplace's Nova Safo has more. Donald Trump floated his credit card idea this week while campaigning in New York. We're going to put a temporary cap on credit card interest rates. We're going to cap it at around 10 percent. We can't let them make 25 and 30 percent. Before the pandemic, most credit card rates were around 15 percent or so. They average in the 20s now. But how would Trump implement his rate cut? How long would it last? No details from the campaign. We've had similar proposals before, bills introduced by Republican Senator Josh Hawley and staunch Democrats, Bernie Sanders and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. All of them were opposed by the banking industry, which says interest rate caps would actually hurt consumers who need access to credit most, those with low incomes and troubled credit histories. If banks are forced to limit the interest rates they can charge, the industry says riskier customers would have their credit cards shut off leaving them with worse options, such as payday lenders. I'm Nova Safo for Marketplace. All right, let's do the numbers. Dow futures are up barely, less than 10%. NASDAQ and S&P futures are down in the 2 to 4 tenths percent range. The yield on the 10-year Treasury is 3.731%. 
Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Progressive Insurance. Progressive is looking for individuals who want to join an inclusive and unique culture. More information, including application, at Progressive.com slash careers. And by Schwab. Schwab offers investors choices like full-service wealth management, self-directed investing options, and trading on Think or Swim. More at Schwab.com. Now, back to office politics. That is the name of our series on how companies shape political divides when they take sides or make a stand. So ahead of the election, we are talking to companies that use their brands and their employees to push policies and candidates, as well as organizations that try to dial down the political temperature by promoting constructive dialogue. Today on Office Politics, when a business shows support or opposition to a particular side of a partisan issue, what does that mean for the consumers who don't agree? Is it a good business move to include politics in advertising? Eric Van Steenberg is a professor of marketing at the Jake Jabs College of Business and Entrepreneurship at Montana State University. He spoke with my colleague, Marketplace's David Brancaccio. There was a time where it was all the rage for companies to say that we have to stand for something. There are certain lines we will not cross as an institution. And to make it clear what side they're on on certain issues. You've tracked it over the years, and you know there's some standout companies that have done just this, right? Absolutely, and I think these days companies are being short-sighted if they're not thinking about what they stand for and how they want to leverage their values when it comes to some sort of political statement or social impact. And let's turn it to the consumer side, though. You have consumers who can make choices among competitors And often the most power we have in the world is our dollars. And we can vote with our money for companies that we see as reflecting what we believe. With self-selection becoming a bigger part of society through polarization, consumers are making decisions of do they want to be a customer of this company or that company? And they're looking for these political cues and they'll make consumption decisions based on their perceived, you know, political advocacy of that corporation. It seems to me this is all so inconvenient for the companies because you can't fully predict in your customer base which way they're leaning on some political issues. And you're guaranteed to alienate some of them when you take a position. It it seems to me that staying agnostic or staying out of politics might be a safer course for many companies. For a larger company, that makes a lot of sense because they're going to have a much wider size audience. If they've got millions of customers, they're not going to make some position that will alienate half of their customer base. That would be a bad marketing strategy. But for smaller companies, maybe a startup or a company that has, you know, began building its brand on something like, you know, they want to be the company of climate change or they want to be this company of entrepreneurship, whatever that brand position that they're taking, uh, it may make sense for them to adopt some political positions because people will see that fits with the brand and that's who I want to spend my money with. Also, if you're involved in a business that could be a commodity, let's say you're selling coffee retail, you're looking for differentiators. You know, maybe your coffee tastes best, but one could be politics. I mean, there is a company called Black Rifle Coffee that leans conservative and is proud of it. It's a differentiator. Again, that's marketing strategy. When you're developing your brand and you're building a brand strategy, you want to look for things that differentiate your brand. And if you choose to, you know, have a political issue or a political worldview be part of that brand, then that's absolutely fine, particularly early on in the life of the organization. Like you said, Black Rifle was a pretty young company when they said, this is the direction we want to take. Looking back, so was Ben and Jerry's. When they first created their brand, they chose the opposite viewpoint. And they said, we want to be sort of progressive with our political positioning, and that will become part of the Ben and Jerry's brand. So, you know, it's, it's a smart Marketing strategy to do it when you're a young company. Prior to polarization, nobody took positions on anything, at least not publicly. Uh, With this country and and other other areas of the world getting more polarized, uh, companies are being asked to do so. And a larger company needs to make a decision. You know, are we going to alienate a big percentage of our audience if we take a political position? And if so, how big is that that we're going to (laughs) alienate? And so it's all, you know, it's a calculated risk if they choose to go down that path. Eric Van Steenberg is a professor of marketing at the Jake Jabs College of Business and Entrepreneurship at Montana State University. Thank you very much. Absolutely my pleasure. Thank you for having me. You can find the extended version of that conversation and all of the office politics coverage at Marketplace.org. In New York, I'm Sabri Beneshore with 
the Marketplace Morning Report. From APM American Public Media. WNYC supporters include